when you realize that your camera hasn't been recording the whole time. Yeah. Hi friends, strangers, internet. My name is Emily Hanhan. I love colorful eyeshadow and colorful language. You may not get both of those in every video, but if you do, don't be surprised. I usually try to do the intro of my video spoiler free without my makeup on, but I had a recording issue and I don't know what happened. So this is the look that I came up with. A little, out. I feel a little out of sorts because um, I just realized that my camera wasn't recording and I was talking and then I realized it and now I'm not talking for some reason. I, I guess I'll go back to what I was talking about. So I just recently purchased two softbox lights and a uh, uh, like tripod for the, f for the floor. I was using a like little little tripod that almost looks like it has like octopus legs. Like it's a it's a flexible, bendable tripod that I've had for years. So anyway, the so the the little tripod that I was using, every time anything would touch the table, it would shake the camera. Which since I was doing makeup on that table, I felt like I was shaking the camera a lot. So I finally have everything that I ordered. It was a little bit of a escapade to get everything. And I am recording for the first time using my old ring light, which is uh, janky, and my two softbox lights and the tripod. So I don't know, it's just a new experience. So I could get closer to the tripod. I don't have my table right in front of me. I have it to the side. Um, in case I'm looking over here a lot, that's what I'm dealing with right now. I have my brushes right here, so I know I'm explaining everything to you because I'm self-conscious about anything that happens in any of my videos, but especially when there's different, different stuff or changes. My hope is that, you know, quality is better um, in terms of lighting. I, I really feel like I know very, very, very little about lighting, but right now I only have my my special lights on. I don't have any of my apartment lights on, and I don't know if that's better or... I also don't know if any of you care at all about anything I'm talking about right now, so I'm trying to not just be like somebody that only talks about YouTube stuff, but it's also like what's been going on this week, so I felt like it was relevant to to my video. I'm a pretty introverted person, and so I don't really chat about like minutia of my life on a regular basis, except to the internet, I guess. But I am excited because it just feels nice to have, even, I didn't expect the tripod to like make me so happy, but it has like levels and, and just things for me to nerd out about. I did my brows and my eye base off camera and I'm going to dig into some blue eyeshadow. Mm -hmm. So this is a mix of shadows from Sydney Grace, Cleona, Davina, and JD Glow. I'm definitely not using them all on my eyes today. I just plucked out a bunch because I wasn't sure what I wanted to try. <laughs> it's already been a weird setup for filming. Uh, I'm in a weird mood as, as always, but this is, um, the matte shadows I'm going to be using are from Sydney Grace. They're from their dupe bundle that they did when Icy Betch, uh, was, was fooled to, oh, I can't talk right now. This is the 
their like dupe bundle to the original Icy Betch when it was like sneak peek to us April Fool's 2018. And then, you know, then Tarte released their version this year that I was not inspired by. <sighs> anyway. Whew. Okay. So, yeah. So, I recently purchased this from somebody else who had bought it and didn't have luck with their Sydney Gray shadows. I had only tried three Sydney Gray shadows before these, but I felt like I was going to... Um, get along with the formula pretty well, so I thought I would buy it at a slight discount. Because my skin is so pale, I can do this blending up and out thing with blue shadow with this color in particular, and it works. But I also want to just say for anybody that is looking at this and thinking about recreating it, this move that I'm doing might not work for you. But I really like this color for that reason. Can I just take like a minute to say that um, I feel like I'm so behind on the trend, but I've gotten very into Doji, his music. Uh, yeah, I'm probably one of the last people to like find him, but I have been completely uh, addicted or, uh, I don't like the words addicted or obsessed, but I, I'll use them. Anyway, I have been comp I've been so into Slow Dancing in the Dark, that song in particular. I could listen to that song over and over and over again, and I have, and I have not gotten tired of it. I don't know what it is. And the video is like weird and delicious and uh, I'm, I'm so into his music right now. Yeah, I've been li I've listened to Slow Dancing in the Dark probably more times than I can count. And I've only, I've only been listening to his music for maybe the last month. And then also, and I know, I don't know, this feels very basic in some way or very millennial to say, but Billie Eilish, her music, I don't, it's just a mood, I don't know. Like I said, I feel way out of my element talking about her music or either of their music, but I just, uh, I don't know. And those two together are like that playlist, I don't know, I've just been all into it. I think if um, her music wasn't playful in the way that it is, I probably would find it a little too something or other, I don't know. But because she's more playful, I feel like I can enjoy it a little more. I also just like a good sarcastic human being. Um, Sydney Grace mats just kind of blend out so easily. I always struggle with the hooded eye life because I wanted just a little bit more of this blue to show up with my eyes open and then as soon as I did that I feel like it looks uh, intense and kind of Mimi-ish. But you know what looking back on it Mimi was probably one of the coolest fat women icons in my life. <laughs> And I laughed when I said that, but I'm not even joking. She was a bitch and took no shit, and I needed to see more of that in my life. It's also just a funny show, at least at the time. I haven't watched it in years and years. Okay, so I think that's all the maths I'm going to do. Has anybody else seen Kimberly Clark's new, uh, newest upload? She did a brandless makeup tag. 
for it to either be a tutorial or a get ready with me. I think I'm going to record one of those this week. I fully intended to do it for this recording, but I don't know. I didn't have the, I didn't have the energy to like commit to that, to be honest. I've been really enjoying using my beauty sponge as a kind of corrector when I go too far out on the eyes and I just have to give many thanks to Butte Bean for that little tip. I feel like I've seen people do it before but she has used that trick so, but she has used that technique so much lately um, and it just reminded me that you could do that. And especially when your sponge is still damp and has some of your product left on it, it I feel like that really helps. Okay, just put the tail end of whatever glitter glue I had left on my inner corner. And I think we're gonna do green shimmer on the inner corner. Do that though. I always. Mm. It happens. I always take it down just like a tiny bit too far. It also might be the brush, but I love this brush for shimmer placement and application. Yeah. Okay. Going in with a little bit of a green on the lower lash line. Although it's just barely showing up. That's okay though. Oh. Every time I do my lower lash line, I get powder in my eye and it just always gets that reaction you are welcome to tell me if this tip is garbage but whenever that happens where i get powder into my eye and it's agitating my eye i take a q-tip i douse it with eye drop and i run it like that and basically clean that lower lash line and upper lash line in the medical industry might tell me that that's a terrible idea and you're welcome to do so but oh it brings such a feeling of relief so before i finish up the eyes i think i want to do the rest of my face i just watched laura may beauty's most recent video about blush draping and how she does it and different different ways you can do it and i feel like this look might be a little heavy handed with blush draping, but I want to do it. <laughs> I was second guessing myself, but I'm gonna just go for it. She does a beautiful crescent shape that I feel like I haven't specifically done before. Um, and I really recommend watching her video. I will try to remember to link it actually in the cards because I think it's just so nicely done. She kind of talks through different shapes um, in the first part of the video, but then shows this specific look. And I feel like the photo references she pulled were also just so nice because sometimes with blush draping, sometimes I'll see the same looks or similar shapes all the time. She does this like crescent moon shape, which I think I already said. And she uses about three different blush tones to do it. Between her and Hannah Louise Poston 
and Mia and a bunch of people that I follow on Instagram. I just, I see blush draping so much and I love it because I think that, um, I don't know, I just love it. I like adventurous makeup and I think that sometimes it's just a good reminder that like, it's just makeup, it's not that serious. So feel free to watch her video to get a better sense of like, the logistics of it. By the way, I know I talk about color theory in my videos here and there, like when I'm just talking about different colors. I think I'm going to do a more focused series. I'm not exactly sure how I want to do it. But if, I mean, and, and I know I have a small audience, but if anybody has any direct questions about color theory, mixing colors, things like that, let me know. I love talking about that kind of stuff and thinking about that kind of stuff because I think the thing for me with makeup and the reason why I've connected to it so strongly uh, lately is that, you know, I grew up doing a lot of art from a young age and then like a little bit through college. My major was kind of creative, but kind of not at the same time. So that's why I say a little bit. Oh, now I overdid it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I have some experience, you know, with that knowledge, I guess that you could say. And I really like bringing that knowledge into makeup. That's our okay. okay, I think that's done. I want to actively work on bringing color theory into video ideas, and how do I want to highlight? I just got distracted. How do I want to highlight this? We'll start here and figure it out. I'm so nervous with highlighter on this look. I don't know why. I wasn't sure if I was going to bring in this, but I'm going to throw on some duochrome peachy highlighter. kind of creates a weird effect with the blush, which I think Lauren did talk about a little bit about how your face is going to have different hollows and shapes to it. And you might discover that more obviously when you start playing with blush or anything. And I see that. Well, how my face shape is picking up. It's like matte shiny. Mm, that's okay. It's a learning experience, really. That's all. Speaking of Lauren May Beauty, I picked up this $1 eyeliner from Nika K called Inchworm. Thanks to her. We'll see if it lasts my waterline, but I figure for a dollar it was worth trying. Lauren did mention in her video how she always likes to have a little bit of darker color on the outer part of her lower lash line. And she's right, it does need a little bit of that definition between the eye and the blush. So it's looking just a little bit odd. Oh, I'm liking this. Okay, all together I'm liking this eye look a lot. I keep looking at my eyes like, what is wrong with them? And then I realize I don't have mascara on. Because I'm a classy human being, I definitely got mascara on my eyes and had to, to clean up. So let's hope I got everything. We're going to do some bridal finishing spray from Scandinavia. I do think this helps with sweaty sweatiness. Also, I know I put on like 
six sprays more than I need to. It's habit, don't come for me. While the setting spray dries, I'm gonna put on some basic, basic nude lipstick. I hope this is the right kind of shade though. Oh yeah, that's actually perfect. I am very happy because this is a lovely color. I ordered the Color Grain Mystery Box and this was one of the lipsticks I got. I'm kind of blurring the edges because I went a little too high over here and it looks odd. But if I blur it, it kind of looks like it's purposeful. This is an extra pretty technique if you have brighter lips or uh, a brighter lip color on. It's super subtle, I feel like, but um, but it also makes me a little less self-conscious because I'm going to be drinking and I know I'll have transfer and depending on how um, intoxicated I get, I might get a little messy. That's not the goal, but it might happen. Okay, I think we're done. We're gonna be done. It, it's been long enough, we're done. So that is the finished look. We have some blush striping with peachy duochrome highlighter and then the green blue eye and peachy lip. I need to figure out how to mix blush draping and highlight because that's where I feel like I got tripped up over, I don't know, I'm definitely over analyzing. The other perk is that for the next video, I have my glasses on, so it kind of covers it up a little bit, which is cool. So, my glasses are always dirty and I always clean them and then I feel like two seconds later, they're dirty. So that is a little chatty get ready with me talking about music and video ideas and trying new techniques. If you like this video, give me a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to dislike. If you are new here and have not subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. If you've been here for a while, thank you as always. Uh, thank you again for spending a little bit of your day with me. I hope to see you again real soon. Bye, friends.